Hey everybody, welcome. It's good to see everybody here. Thank you for being here on this training today. Uh, my name is Tyson Zahner. If you guys have never met me before, I should take a quick second to introduce myself. Um, I, today we're going to be covering all things YouTube. So um, I'll tell you here in a minute kind of who this is for, but essentially if you need clients for your business and maybe you're sick of uh, Facebook, <laughs> uh, aren't we all? Uh, maybe you've uh, you've tried Facebook and things haven't worked for you. Uh, maybe you've tried, uh, by the way, can I get a quick shout out just to let me know if you guys can hear me? Just say yes in the chat uh, comments to let me know that you can hear me, that everything's coming through okay. Um, and if you're, so I'm seeing yeses. If your audio is not working for some reason, you might need to log out and log back in. Um, and by the way, in the chat, I will see your chat. You may not necessarily see everyone else's uh, chat. So good to know that you guys can hear me just fine. All right. Uh, yeah. So if you're having any trouble, you may have to change your, your audio settings, but Anyway, um, so we're going to be talking about how to find clients on YouTube. I'm going to talk about the system. We're going to talk about how to run ads, how to do it in a way that is low risk to manage your, you know, your ad spend, um, how to find your audience. I'm going to show you the new way to target your audience on YouTube. And um, this is going to be really, really helpful and informative to you. So um, I, I, I don't have anything to sell you on today's uh, web class. If you like what you hear, the only thing, the only call to action I'm going to offer you is the opportunity to to perhaps book a call with a member of my team if you want to dive deeper and have us help you customize this strategy and talk a bit more about how it would work for your specific business. But we've got a lot to cover. So what I'm going to do here in just a moment is I'm going to share my screen and I do appreciate all you being here. I see um, Ed is here and Colin's here and Deb is here and Ricardo. I see all your lovely little faces. Um, so let me take just a moment to share my screen and we're going to get a quick confirmation that everybody can see my screen here in a moment. Would you guys let me know if this is working. If you're seeing my screen properly, you should be seeing something that says how to bring in a consistent, predictable stream of clients, as many as you want each and every week using YouTube. If that's the case, just give me a, uh, a quick thumbs up or a yes in the chat to let me know. I do see yeses. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So um, I'm going to dive right in because we do have a lot to cover today. And I just want to I want to dive right in and give you guys the value that you showed up for. So what we're going to focus on today. I'm going to talk a little bit about why YouTube is so effective um, and why I prefer it really. Oh, now, it's not that I don't use Facebook. I still do use Facebook, but I'm going to tell you some of the reasons that I find YouTube to be more profitable. I get a better return on my investment um, and why I find it to be more effective. I find that the prospects who find me through YouTube go further through my funnel, they buy more, they have a higher closing rate, and which ultimately relates to more money, which isn't that what we all want. So I'm going to tell you why that is. We're going to talk about whether you should focus on organic videos on YouTube or paid ads on YouTube. There are some pros and cons to each one. We'll talk about uh, paid ads on, on YouTube and how much you should budget, how to test paid ads with minimal risk, how to target your ideal audience, the new way really to target them. It's changed recently in just the past couple of months. And I'm even going to give you near the end of this presentation, my simple 60 second YouTube ad script. Okay. Like literally this is a simple ad that, that doesn't have to be longer than about 60 to 90 seconds of a YouTube ad. And it works really well. I'll walk you through that as well. So would you do me a favor real quick before we dive in while I'm explaining who this is for, would you put a comment in the chat and let me know what um, kind of what you do. Are, are you, what is your business? Are you a coach? Are you a consultant? Are you an agency? Are you a service provider? Do you have a physical uh, product that you sell? Are you a brick and mortar business? Um, you know, do you sell someone else's product like as a direct sales rep or do you sell your own uh, product? Is it a program that you sell, information? Uh, just kind of give me an idea of what you're selling because that'll help me to kind of, um, uh, to kind of uh, cu customize this for what it is that you do. All right, cool, cool, cool. I'm seeing course provider, hypnotherapist, trainer, life coach, uh, insurance consultant, associate broker. Okay, cool. Uh, I've got a marketing agency, business coach, direct sales, uh, financial services. Awesome. An author. Great. All, all really good stuff here. 
um, consultant, yeah, coaches, consultants, this is going to be perfect for you. Service providers, this is going to be great for you. Um, really, who this is for is A, if you need clients, right? And you're like, okay, I can't rely, the methods I'm using now to get clients, I can't necessarily rely on them. They're not predictable. They're not repeatable. They're not scalable. And you don't want to rely on methods like that, like referrals. You don't want to spend hours a day posting organic content on social media. You don't want to come up with new content ideas day after day, week after week for social media. Um, you've tried challenges. Maybe you've tried direct messaging strangers. You've tried Facebook groups. Um, none of that seems to work. Maybe you've tried Facebook ads and you've lost money. Maybe you've tried to rely on word of mouth and referrals. And that is sort of an up and down type of thing for you. Well, if you meet any of that, then this is for you. Now, who this is not for are going to be people who don't, if you don't meet these two criteria, you can probably log off of the webinar and not waste your time. Really, in order for this to work for you, you need to meet two criteria. Number one, you need to be able to solve a major life or business problem with your work, your program, your product, your service, whatever it is that you do. If you're here and you're brand new and you're like, Tyson, show me how to make money from scratch. Show me the newest uh, biz, uh, biz opportunity. That's not what this is about. This is for people who either you already have an established business and you're getting clients, but you want more, or you know that you have a knowledge, a skill, a wisdom, or an expertise that can solve someone's problem, but um, you just haven't started getting clients for that and you want someone to help you sort of package it up, have the strategy for how to find those clients, then great, you can stick around. But if you're like, I don't even know what I would sell and, um, you know, this is probably not for you. And second of all, you need to be willing to invest in the growth of your business. Um, obviously, running things like YouTube ads does cost money. And so if you're here and you're like, I want to do things as cheaply as possible. Now, granted, I'm going to show you how to do this at um, theoretically an enormous profit like we do and how to do it in a way where you test with very minimal risk. But if you're not willing to, uh, willing to invest in your business, then this is probably not a good fit and you can log off. But if you're still here, then this is perfect for you. And you might be wondering, well, what are the advantages of YouTube over Facebook or LinkedIn or TikTok or any other platform? And why do I get such a great return on this platform? So the number one thing I love about YouTube is that the funnel I'm going to show you, I, I, we're going to send them from a video on YouTube to a video that they need to watch in our funnel, right? And it doesn't need to be a long video. I can give you the scripts for these, but in order to get people to consume video, usually when we find people on Facebook, they are more distracted. Um, and we have to distract them from what they're doing. On YouTube, people are going there with intention and they're already watching video. And with a video, we can establish immediate rapport, right? Just think about at the beginning of this, whenever I introduced myself, you could see my face, feel my energy, see I'm a real person. That can create incredible rapport. And we know people buy from others they know, like, and trust. Um, the, I like to think of YouTube being like a dinner party. And Facebook is kind of like billboard advertising. Think about the, the difference. If you were at a dinner party and you struck up a, a three-minute conversation with somebody over cocktails and they said, well, what do you do? And you said, oh, I'm a financial advisor. And they said, really, tell me more about that. Oh, well, I help people with this problem and that problem. Oh, yeah, I've been trying this. And then you give them a little bit of helpful advice. Imagine how much more qualified that person is that had the little conversation and got to know you in two or three minutes at a dinner party versus the guy who's just driving down the road and he sees a billboard on the side of the road. If, if once this guy in three weeks from now needs your service, who is he going to, or your program or your product or the solution that you provide, who is he going to be more likely to remember? The guy at the dinner party or the billboard that he drove by? Well, Facebook advertising is like that billboard and it's far less memorable. And so we can create far more rapport and memorability with our prospects. I, we can get great long-term residual traffic. Um, it's less for paid ads. I find YouTube to be less crowded because most people just don't take the time to learn this platform, but it's not a hard platform to learn if you have somebody showing you how to do it. The targeting is far less affected by the iOS updates. And here's what I mean by that. If you don't know what the iOS updates are, a couple years ago, um, so Facebook gets its targeting data from apps primarily. And it relies on these applications to pass data back to Facebook so you can target those people, which means Facebook doesn't own its own data. YouTube, however, 
right? Who owns YouTube? Somebody type it in the chat if you know. Yep. Okay, somebody just said Google. That's right. So Google owns YouTube. Well, what else does Google own, right? Google owns Google search engine. They know what people are watching on YouTube, what what uh, videos they're watching. They own Chrome browser, so they know what websites you're visiting. They own Android, so they know lots of stuff that you do on your phone. Um, they own Gmail, so they know certain things about your email behavior. All of that is data that Google owns first party data to, so it's not affected by the iOS updates, which makes our targeting far more accurate. Plus, we can control the timing of when our ads are displayed. We'll talk about that a little bit more. We can get better language targeting, meaning like if you wanted to target only people who speak English or only people who speak Spanish or, or German or Italian, you can do that. It's really easy to repurpose YouTube for other platforms like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and so forth. And finally, I love it because of the state of mind that people are in. Think about it. Why do most people go to Facebook? They go to Facebook to be distracted, right? They go to Facebook in order to say, well, you know, I'm standing in line at the bank or at the grocery store and I need to kill some time. People almost always go to YouTube with intention. I want to see how to solve a problem. I want to see how to achieve XYZ results. So imagine if you can get in front of someone, right? who's recently been searching for the exact phrases related to whatever it is that you sell. So take a moment right now, and um, if you're taking notes, just take a second right now and jot down a few ideas about what your perfect audience would likely be searching for on Google, or you it doesn't even have to be on YouTube. They could be searching for it on Google, and we can target them based on their Google searches as well on YouTube. So for example, for me, I might target people who've recently been searching, how do I get leads for my business? Or how do I find clients? Uh, if you're a relationship expert, it might be, how do I fix my marriage? Um, financial people, how do I prepare for retirement? Weight loss people, it might, or fitness, how do I lose weight fast? Um, how do I make extra money? How do I deal with depression? Um, what are the best stock picks for 2023? Um, how do I beat alcohol addiction? Whatever problem, honestly, you can almost start any Google search with how do I fill in the problem and we can help you to target those people and imagine how much more targeted these people are going to be when we can find them in the exact moments that they've been recently searching for these exact things. It means that they are in the market for a solution right now, which means they're going to be way more likely to buy your product or your service. And again, if if you are interested in booking a call with my team in order to help you really customize this, there is a link on the screen, but let me get just quick fair warning. We cannot talk to everybody. We do not take every application that comes in to talk to our team. We don't work with everyone. You really do have to meet those main two criteria that I mentioned earlier. You need to be able to solve a major life or business problem with your work that you do, your program, your product, your service, and you need to be willing to invest in the growth of your business. If that's not a fit, then um, you probably shouldn't apply, but the rest of you, if you'd like some personalized help with this, feel free to utilize the link on the screen. You can just type that into a browser and you can register for a time to speak with uh, one of my partners who can walk through some customized strategy for targeting your audience on YouTube and how this works. Now, the big question I always get asked is this one. Well, how much is it gonna cost, right? How much will I need to budget in order to run YouTube ads, okay? Well, the answer to this question really is as follows. And by the way, if you guys do not see the link on the screen, let me do this real quick here. I wanna make sure you guys can all see that, okay? The link on the screen. If you guys wanna to go to that link on the screen, you should be able to, um, uh, you should be able to register for a call. I'll also put it in the chat just in case anybody needs it. And then we're gonna talk about the next steps, okay? And again, I'll try and stick around and answer questions here at the end, but if, um, all right, there's the link, everybody. Uh, but hold, your, hold any questions that you might have until later in the presentation, and I'll try and answer those a little bit later, okay? All right, next question that I frequently get asked is this one. Well, how much is it gonna cost me to run ads on YouTube if I do run paid ads? Well, 
here's the here's the thing most people if you are a truly entrepreneurial minded person you understand that ads will not cost you anything why because the goal of advertising is to make a profit you understand that advertising is an investment right so the real question is not how much will it cost me how much will i spend every month on ads the real question you should ask is how much should i budget to acquire my first client and then how much profit will I have so I can reinvest that to get client two, three, four, and five, right? So what we're doing here is we're, we're not, when people hear me, I, I might say, okay, for me to acquire a client, it might cost me, let's say $500. And you might, oh my God, $500 to acquire a client. That's, that's too expensive, right? Well, this is why, first of all, we help you to put together an offer that is far more than $500 so that you can make uh, on your first sale of a client, we're not doing these la uh, these what we call um, um, ascension models, where it's like, oh, we sell an ebook for five dollars, and then we sell them a hundred dollar thing, and then upsell them to another thing. First of all, that model pisses people off. They don't like being upsold the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Your best clients, your best prospects, no. And and here here's the way I like to think of this. Let me let me real quickly bring my face back up on the screen to give you guys a quick understanding of this. I want you to imagine for a moment that you went to a, you saw a motel or a hotel or a motel that was priced for $20 a night. Would you think, oh my God, what a great deal. I've got to, I got to stay there. Or would you think, hold on, 20 bucks a night, something's got to be wrong with this place. High quality people are going to think the latter, right? And when you sell your product for a low ticket price, and you try and upsell them, upsell after upsell, not only does it piss people off, second of all, you actually make way less money and you repel all of the very best people. The best people know that a $20 ebook or even a $100 info product is not really gonna solve their problem. And so what you do with those low ticket offers is you attract dabblers, you attack tire kickers, you attract lower quality people who expect you to move heaven and earth for uh, minimal amounts of money. When you raise your prices and you package together an offer at a higher ticket price, which we can absolutely help you to do, and if you're not sure if we can help you, just fill out the application. Um, and if our team believes we can help you to structure your offer at a higher ticket price, what we can do is we can attract way better quality people so that you can make an immediate profit, 3x, 4x, 5x return on your ad spend immediately straight out of the gate, right? And you're going to end up simultaneously working with way better quality people, which is ultimately what we're looking to do, right? So um, th that's why I explain. Let me bring my screen back up for you guys to see here. That's why, <clears throat> excuse me, I say that ads really should not cost you any money. If you have uh, your, your offer priced correctly, okay, and you look at advertising as an investment and not an expense, there's a great story of Warren Buffett. If you guys know Warren Buffett, one of the world's richest men, he, when he was like 18, he bought a pinball, he bought a, a pinball machine for $25, which was a considerable investment in 1940s. And he put it in a barber shop. And then when that pinball machine had paid for itself, he used the profit to buy the next pinball machine and put it in another barber shop. When those two pinball machines paid themselves off, they used the profit, he used the profits to buy a third pinball machine. And like 18 months later, he sold that entire business for, I think it was like $1,800. In the 1940s, that was a lot of money. So how much of Warren Buffett's own money did he invest? The answer is $25. In fact, if he had gotten a loan or put it on credit, he used someone else's money. He used the pinball proceeds to pay it back. So this is why I don't think that I'm spending any money on ads. I'm, I'm using my credit card money to uh, get my first client. And then I'm using my client's money to pay back the credit card and then get my next three, four, and five clients. And I do this over and over and over and over again. But this always begs this question of, should I focus on paid advertising or should I get sort of quote unquote free? And I put, I put free in quotes. Why? Because um, advertising is either going to cost you your time or your money. It's going to cost you something. So if you have more time than money, then you might want to go with the organic route. But if you have more money than time and you want fast results and you want to do it in a very predictable, scalable way, then paid ads are what I recommend. But the pros and cons are pretty much flip-flop of each other. 
the cons of paid ads are that it's higher risk. You know, you could lose some money in the testing phase. You're going to have to spend some time to learn a new skill. There's testing and tweakings. And ads don't always work straight out of the gate, which is why it's good to have a uh, somebody who's run millions of dollars on YouTube ads like myself coaching you and helping you along the way. The pros are really fast returns. It's guaranteed traffic. It's going to happen immediately. Whereas, you know, organic, we don't know when or how, how fast it's going to happen or how often it's going to happen. Really targeted. Um, you don't need a lot of videos. Like we're not on with organic, we need to create almost, uh, you know, a couple of videos every single week on YouTube to train the algorithm. With this, I have been running like the same two or three ads on YouTube for eight months now. I haven't touched them. My entire funnel was built one time. If that's appealing to you, then we'd love to help you kind of build this thing out. These videos can be really short. Like I said, at the end of this presentation, I'm going to give you my 60 second script for writing a great YouTube ad. Um, it's a great way to build a business and a brand and reach your goals really quickly. And if uh, here's what's really cool. A lot of people don't know this. You know that little skip button on YouTube ads? If people click the skip button before the 30 second mark, you don't get charged, right? So if you write your ad the right way, we repel the wrong people in the first 20 to 25 seconds. So they have time to click away before the 30 second mark. And we say things that attract only our perfect prospects in the first 30 seconds. Not only does this save you money, it trains the algorithm to find more people like the ones who are watching past 30 seconds. It's a really, really powerful hack. Now, obviously the cons and pros of organic traffic are just the flip-flop. Yeah, it, the cons are it's way slower. You have way less control. These videos are typically going to be need to be longer. My 60-second script probably won't work for an organic. Okay, it's only going to work for a paid ad. These are going to need to be at least five to seven minutes or longer. Um, you need to be really consistent, putting out a lot of content um, over a considerable amount of time. But the pros are lower risk, doesn't cost as much money. It's great for long-term traffic. Uh, your viewers typically have a lot of intent because they're watching that video right at the moment that they do a search. And it's a great way to warm up your traffic. The, here's ultimately the way I think of it. I think of free organic traffic. Like if I wanted water, I wanted a drink of water, and I just said, well, it's going to rain eventually. I'll just put a container out in the yard and I'll get a drink when it rains. Eventually, it will probably give me water. Or I could just say, why don't I just go turn on the faucet or the water hose and I'll get water anytime I want it. That's what paid traffic is like. I and most serious business owners that I know go the paid traffic route for this reason, right? This is why I said at the beginning that if you want my help, it's really important that you're willing to invest in your business through paid ads. And we're going to talk in a moment about how to do that with low risk. So you're not wasting a bunch of money figuring out what do, what works and what doesn't work. But let's just illustrate this with one last little graphic here, right? A lot of people think of free, again, there's that quote unquote free traffic this way. Well, I spent $0 and I made a $3,000 sale. I made a 100% profit, no overhead. Yay. But here's the real question. How long did it take you to get that result? Did it take weeks, months? And more importantly, is this repeatable and predictable? Usually the answer to that question is no, it's not typically repeatable and predictable. And, to, and in order to build a real business, what I would much rather do is say, okay, I'm going to spend, let's say $500 on an ad on YouTube, and I'm going to now get a $3,000 sale. Okay. I've made $2,500 in profit, but this can now happen in days. And I can take the $2,500 I made in profit and reinvest it to get my next five clients. So if your goal is, I want to get, let's say, let's say your price point is $3,000. Okay. And you say, I want five clients a month at 3000. That's $15,000 a month for your monthly income. So you only need five clients to get there. That is not hard to do, by the way, if you set up the right system. Well, then what most people think in their mind is, well, if I have to spend, let's say $500 to acquire every client, that means I need a budget of $2,500 a month. Oh my God, I got a budget $2,500. That's a non-entrepreneurial way of thinking about it. The real way of thinking about it is, okay, I made $15,000 in gross revenue. It cost me $2,500 to acquire those. I walk away with over $12,000 in profit. Would you trade $2,500 for $15,000? Obviously, the answer to that question is yes, all day, every day. You just need the right system in place to attract the right kind of clients, and you need somebody to help you with the advertising, the system, and the offer. And again, if you'd like my help doing that, 
I'd be happy to do that with you. Um, one of our clients, uh, Alexandra, by the way, she uh, this can this is how fast this can happen, right? She turned on her YouTube ads. We helped her set up her system in a matter of weeks. And she got 30 opt-ins within a couple of days after turning on her YouTube ads. And she had three booked calls, people who booked a call with her. Then she updated us a couple days later and said, hey, I had a, a, a call last night with my ideal client. She ended up becoming a program of my $3,500 program. So she turned on the ads and within days later, she had a client for her $3,500 program. And again, if you guys would like, if you would like my help with this, okay, um, you are more than welcome to visit this link. Again, we do not take everyone. You you do have to apply to talk to uh, a member of my team and we... we we simply cannot fit everyone on the schedule, but if you if you like what you're hearing and you'd like us to help you customize this strategy for your business, feel free to visit, uh, just manually type the link in that you see on the screen, and um, a member of my team will be happy to look at your application. If it looks like we understand your business, um, you know we know that we can help you, you fit what we do, and, um, and we know that we can help you get your offer to a really profitable place and build the system around it. We'll take your call, we'll put you on the books, and we'll be happy to have a conversation with you and really help you to customize this strategy for your business, all right? So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to make note of that link um, and visit that while you can. All right, so with that said, let's take a minute here and let's go on to the next step of the process. Hold on here. There we go, let me share my screen like this. All right, here we go. All right, so when people worry about spending money on YouTube, um, they are only thinking about what I call lagging indicators, okay? Leading indicators are what help us manage our risk. What do I mean? A leading indicator is stuff that happens early in the prospect's journey that can happen really inexpensively so we can determine, are we on track to be profitable? A leading indicator is a click or an opt-in. Now, at the end of the day, are clicks and opt-ins the most important metric that I'm looking for? No. The most important metric I really want to know is how much did it cost me to close a sale, to get a client, right? That uh, cost per acquisition in terms of clients is far more important than cost per click or cost per opt-in. I don't really care about those, but in the beginning stages, right? So if we look visually, right? The way that most people come to me, that most people, the, the way I literally, I, we, our calendar is filled every single week, all week long, and we literally bring in, um, into our business, at least five to 10 new clients per week, each and every single week. And we're a small team. So it's not like we're, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the guy coaching everybody. So we've got a really small team of people. And this is the exact funnel that we utilize. I'll walk you through this funnel in a moment, but essentially the clicks happen in between. So we got a YouTube ad that happens, let's say, right. Let me put on my little mouse thing here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, here we go. Our YouTube ads happen right here, okay? Our audience sees us and they click to go to a landing page where we get their name and their email address and oftentimes a phone number as well. They will immediately, immediately be redirected to a short 10 to 12 minute video that we help you to, we help all of our clients to script this out. I've got a full template. We just basically uh, help you to write it. We coach you every step of the way. And the goal is to get these people after 10 minutes to say, yes, I want to book a call. So what they do is they they fill out an application and they book a call on your calendar. Now, here's what's really valuable about this. Number one, these people have been through filters before you actually ever talk to them. They've watched a video on YouTube saying, yes, I want this. They've given you their name and email. If they're not uh, interested enough, they're going to disqualify themselves. If they're not interested in watching a short 10-minute video... They're going to leave this page, which is what you want. You want the wrong people to leave because you don't have time, like I don't have time, to be talking to all the wrong people on the phone. You want an automated system that weeds out the wrong people so that by the time you get on the phone, you're only talking to the people who are primed and ready to buy. And if anybody slips through the cracks, we have a short application that we determine you look at before the call and say, yes, 
I believe I can help this person. I understand their situation. Uh, yes, they're a good fit. Yes, they're interested in moving forward right now. You, we'll help you to write all of the questions for your questionnaire. And so by the, you don't even have to get on the phone with everybody who books a call. We frequently cancel calls where we're like, hey, it looks like maybe the timing isn't a good fit. Maybe we need to table this conversation for a month from now. And we make sure that our calendar is really efficient so that we can have at least a th our goal for our business is a minimum of a 30% closing rate. That means out of every 10 people we talk to, we're going to close a minimum of three or four people, right? So imagine if you want to make let's say $20,000 a month, and we help you to put together a $3,000 offer. Okay, we need what? Six to seven clients a month in order to do that, which means we need about two a week. Two, four, six, eight. Two, two, one to two a week. So that means you might need to talk to about three or four people a week if you have the right system in place, qualifying these people so you're only talking to the best people and pre-selling them before they get on the phone with you you only need to talk to about three to four people and you have to have the right script. Um, I shouldn't say script because selling is not really a, it's not, they say this, you say this, um, but it is a framework of saying the right thing at the right time. And we give you our exact framework that we use in our business to close 30% plus. But here's what's important on this slide. It's where the leading indicators happen versus the lagging indicators. Because if we can look at things like clicks and say, well, listen, I know I should be getting clicks from my YouTube ad for three to five dollars a piece. And I know I should be getting opt-ins on my landing page for nine to fifteen dollars. That's kind of our sweet spot that we're aiming for. Well, now we don't have to spend more than let's say $65, $70. And we've got a pretty good idea of whether we're on track to be profitable. If we've spent $70 and we've gotten three clicks and zero opt-ins, we're gonna turn that sucker off and figure out where is the problem, right? And that's where a coach comes into play to help you with this, to say, okay, I've spent millions on YouTube ads, let me help you diagnose the problem, and here's where to fix it, right? And that's where we come in to help you with this if you're looking for a coach. Um, one of my team members can, can talk to you further about uh, the possibilities of working with us on that, but, um, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we're clearly not on track to be profitable, or yes, we are. And now we've not wasted more than about 60 to $70 instead of hundreds or thousands of dollars. And then once we know we're on track, I'm looking for every person to book a call with me to be in the $150 to $200 range. And then if I can close one out of every three or four people, then I'm talking about uh, the cost per acquisition for, for me might be, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars. But if I'm selling a pro, even if my, even if my, let's imagine this, if your program is three thousand dollars, even if it cost you a thousand dollars, would you trade a thousand for three thousand? I would all day long. I just tripled my money. Where else can I triple my money? But this again requires you to have the right offer, package it the right way, have the right system in place to attract the right people. And you don't need to, a lot of people say, yeah, but not everybody's going to be willing to buy a $3,000, $5,000, $10,000 offer, okay? And you're right. You don't need everyone. You only need the right people and you only need a few of them every month to, to make an incredible income and live an incredible lifestyle, I know, because this is my exact business model, right? We only work with high quality people that we know we can help, that, that are willing to do the work. Now, before we go on, let me just remind you guys again, I'm here in just a second, I'm going to give you my exact script for writing YouTube ads. It's a 60 second script and you're going to definitely want to take notes on this, but let me just remind you guys once again that if you would if what you're hearing here seems like a fit for what you're looking to do, feel free to book a call, but again, I, if you joined us late, I must remind you, we do not work with everyone. We cannot get on the phone with everyone. My team is small. It's me and about four other people, right? And so we simply don't have enough calendar space to talk to everyone. So this is why we have you fill out a short questionnaire first to make sure we understand your business, to make sure we can hit the ground running um, on that call and really give you the most strategy in the time available on that call. So um, if, uh, if you're interested, like I said earlier, you really just need to make sure that you meet two criteria. Criteria number one, you need to be um, able to solve a major life or business problem. Why? Because in order to get people to actually buy from you, right? We have to have something that they're willing to pay for that you can monetize. And if we don't solve a problem that's big enough for people, um, 
then they're not going to be willing to pay you the money and I can't help you to put an offer together. But if you, anything in the realm of, honestly, any of these four categories, um, and, and I'm certain we can help you, right? Um, if you have the uh, ability, your, your expertise lies in, let's say, relationships. You're able to help people um, solve their relationships, whether it's, you know, uh, marriages, uh, getting dates, whether it's their children, um, whatever. Uh, we've got people, you know, uh, helping people on the brink of divorce. Relationships are awesome. It's one of the three biggies that I, I tell people, you're never going to be out of business if you help people in health, wealth, or relationships. Those are the three big areas that people always want help with. So if you can help, if you're an expert in any one of those three areas, you can help people with their wealth. Maybe you are, you're a career coach. Maybe you can help people make extra money. Maybe you can help people uh, sell more of their product, grow their business, um, whatever it is. Uh, maybe you're a financial consultant, financial advisor, anything in wealth, and I'm certain we can help you. Anything in relationships, that's a big one that people are willing to pay money for solutions. And then finally, uh, obviously health. People are willing to pay for that as well. Now, if you're in personal development, that's another one that um, can be a really great area that we can help you with. Um, but I will say there are some areas, let me, let me just bring my face up to mention this very quickly. There are some areas that don't always fall neatly into those four boxes and we still bring on clients. Like we've had clients that have uh, physical products that still solve a major life or business problem. We, we brought on a guy uh, about a month ago who he sells a remote control. It's a physical product. Um, and it's like a $15,000 remote control that they sell to yacht owners who have trouble ba backing their yacht into whatever the harbor or wherever they're backing it into. And so it's kind of a niche area, but it solves a major problem. I don't want to tear up my yacht and the other yachts around me, right? So even if it's a physical product and it doesn't fall into one of those categories, these are still areas that we can help people with. The real question you have to ask is, do I have a product or a program? Do I have the wisdom, the skills, the knowledge, or the expertise to solve a major life or business problem? If the answer is yes, I'd love to help you package that and help you to get to your income goals with very, very few clients each month and a simple system uh, using YouTube ads. And finally, if you're willing to invest in the growth of your business, um, then I'd love for you to uh, take a moment to apply. And uh, if it looks like you're a fit, a member of my team will be glad to have a conversation with you and help you to customize this strategy more for what it is that you do. All right, with all of that said, let's go on and take a look at the big question that a lot of people want to know, which is, well, what do I say in these YouTube ads? All right, so this is my favorite starting script for YouTube ads. Now, in my program, we talk you through some other types of scripts, but this is a really good starting point, okay? And so this is, um, I'll explain what each of these are and I'll give you examples in a minute. But in the first five seconds, as you guys know on YouTube, um, the viewer cannot click the skip button for the first five seconds. So that first five seconds, I want to make sure that my perfect audience member, I say something to them that they, I, here's what I don't want to do. I don't want to say, hi, everybody. My name's Tyson Zahner. And here's why you should listen to me. That's all about me. No, 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 no. The first five seconds is all about your prospect. What are they interested in? And I, I like to use uh, a method that I call join the conversation that's already happening in your prospect's mind. I learned that from a great marketing expert of old named Eugene Schwartz. I'll say it again because it's worth writing down. Good marketing is about joining the conversation already happening in your prospect's mind. What is your prospect not thinking about? You. They're not thinking about how great you are, what your credentials are, why you're awesome. So we don't talk about that. Honestly, I almost never talk about that in my marketing, okay? There are places for that, but especially we don't lead with that, okay? What are they interested in? Well, they're interested in their problems, their goals, their fears, their frustrations, their, their, their desired outcomes, right? Um, the things that are keeping them awake at night. So in the first five seconds, I'm going to call out a specific problem or goal that my audience, ha they either have that problem or they want that outcome. Then what I, I call this putting the hook in the water, right? I put, this is putting the bait in the water and only my perfect audience would be attracted to that bait and everybody else would go, oh, I don't want that, right? Then what I do in the next 25 seconds is I set the hook in their mouth. Okay, and I'm going to show you an example of what to do with this in a moment. The next 30 seconds, I differentiate how what I do is different from the other things they've tried to solve their problem in the past. 
and then I give them a call to action. And then I just have a little end screen at the end to give them time to click. So it's really only a four section. It's an ad with four sections because the end screen isn't really a section where you say anything. It's just 10 seconds of silence where they have time to click. Because the reason we want that, by the way, on YouTube, if, the vid if your ad ends right away, it immediately goes to the next video they were planning to watch. And, and then they, they've lost the opportunity to click to go over to your website and opt in. We don't want that. We want to give them 10 seconds or so to click. So here's an, ex this is literally word for word, one of my best performing ads. And it follows this exact framework. So I'm going to give it to you right now. A lot of people think that the who section of their ad needs to call out the person. It can. You could say, if you're a woman over the age of 65 who wants Medicare or whatever. Okay, yeah, I guess you could do that. But I like to actually call out the problem so that my audience self-identifies. Again, this is putting the bait in the water that only my ideal prospect would, would be attracted to. I typically want to create a ton of curiosity. I, I often do this by asking them a question or calling out a common problem. And so a good example of this, this is one of my actual ads says, hey, if you've ever run Facebook ads and you got zero clients, you're going to want to listen very carefully for the next two minutes, right? So I'm calling out a problem that anybody who's who's not run ads is going to click skip. And that's exactly what I want. This is people who are willing to invest in their business because they've run ads before, but it's not working. They've got that problem. They want clients. That bait is perfect for my audience to say, yes, I will keep listening. Everyone else is going to click skip, which is what I want because that tells the algorithm, don't show it to any of these people that have skipped. Start showing it to more of the people who've watched. Um, here's one more example of the who, okay? This is just a separate example from another ad that I've run. Where's the best place to find high paying clients for your business? Is it Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, LinkedIn, or Instagram? Now, who's gonna stick around past five seconds? Only people who wanna know where should I, I need high paying clients for my business and where should I go to get it? Is it? And here's what's really interesting. I, I'm telling you here that it's YouTube, but I don't tell them in the ad it's YouTube. I create a ton of curiosity so they have to opt in in order to find out the answer. This is how I get their name and their email. Curio uh, somebody, another one of my marketing mentors um, um, was asked, like, what is the most powerful thing that you can do in your marketing? And, and um, one of his students said to him, well, it's, um, it's, uh, it's self-benefit. It's whatever is beneficial to the person listening. He says, no, it's curiosity. Curiosity trumps it all. If you can say something that makes your audience say, God, I've got to scratch that itch. I've got to opt in and find out what this thing is. You're going to get far higher opt-in rates on your landing page. Now, obviously, we need to make sure the thing, the thing we're making them curious about also qualifies them to go further in our funnel. We don't just want anybody who's like, you know, uh, like, where, where's the best place to find iPads for $2 a piece? And, you're, and then you end up selling them marriage advice. Well, those two things don't relate to one another. So clearly the curiosity we create needs to go with the thing that we're going to sell them. And, and of course, having a great copywriter coach to help you with this is, is crucial for this. Now, um, so that's a good example. So here is my entire ad. Um, uh, where's the best place to find high paying clients? Facebook. So that's the, that's the bait in the water. Now I'm going to set the hook with this. Well, if you're a coach, consultant, agency, course creator, really, if you're anybody who solves a major life or business problem and you're trying to find your ideal clients and actually get them to reach out to you and talk to you about your programs, products, and services, the answer to this question will probably surprise you. So what I did was I clarified, here's exactly who this is for, especially if you are this type of person, you're going to love this. And I'm creating more curiosity by saying the answer will likely surprise you. Now, again, you know, I just told you, I'm not actually going to tell them it's YouTube. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate and agitate by telling them what it's not. So what I like to do is I, this is literally my word for word, one of my ads. And I'll give you a hint. It's not Facebook. Now, give me, let me give you guys a little tip here before I continue reading. The way you agitate and differentiate here, it, you need to pick a thing that you know the majority of your audience listening has either tried or has thought about trying, okay? If it's not something that they've tried before, then it's probably not gonna have the effect. I know the majority of my audience has tried Facebook. They're frustrated with it, it hasn't worked. So this works really well. So what I do is I differentiate by saying, it's not Facebook. They go, oh my gosh, what could it be? And then I say, which is great news, that means you're not going to have to all the stuff you hate about Facebook. 
and I just insert a ton of stuff I know they're frustrated with. You don't have to direct message strangers. You're not going to have to chase people in groups. You don't have to post a bunch of organic content. You don't have to come up with new ideas day after day. Um, you don't have to, um, you know, rely, uh, you don't have to waste money on ads that are not as targeted because of the iOS updates that have broken the targeting. And so they're going, yes, yes, yes. I've, I've experienced all of those problems on Facebook. And then I say, if you want to know what the answer is, and then I tell them what to do next. Now, let me give you a little, this is another writer downer here. Okay. Most people think that a call to action is just telling someone what to do. All right, go click this button. See you later. No, 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 no. Here's a good call to action. Here's what I've got. Here's what it will do for you. Here's what to do next. I'll say it again. You might want to write it down. A good call to action has all three. Here's what I've got. Here's what it will do for you. Here's what you should do next. All three of those are what you need in order to really entice someone to actually click and take the next step with you. If you just say click the button below, it's not nearly as powerful. And bonus points if you add the fourth thing, okay? The three, the three non-negotiables are, here's what I've got, here's what it will do for you, here's what you should do next. Bonus points if you say, if you include, here's why you should do it now, or some urgency, okay? Here's why you should do it right now. So, in mine, I say, if you want to know where to go and the best marketing strategy to attract high-paying clients, okay, that's what it will do for you. And notice, they're not in order. I'm not saying... Click here. I'm not saying, here's what I've got. It's a free masterclass. Here's what it will do for you. You can attract high paying clients. Here's what to do next. Click the button. I could do that, but I'm actually um, going in and out of these three things. I start with, here's what it will do for you. If you want to know where to go and the best marketing strategy to attract high paying clients, so that's what it will do for you. Here's what I've got. I have a free masterclass coming up today and tomorrow that shows you a simple four uh, step sales funnel that turns total strangers. So I'm back to here's what it will do for you. What I've got is a masterclass, what it will do for you. Turns uh, a simple four step sales funnel that turns total strangers into high paying clients within 48 hours. And I'll show you which traffic source you should be using that you've probably never tried before. Here's what you should do next. If you want to check it out, it's totally free. Just click this ad, register your details on the next page and watch the training while it's available today and tomorrow. See you there. While it's available today and tomorrow is the why you should do it right now, okay? Oh, I don't know. Will this not be available after tomorrow? I guess I better opt in and, and, and watch it while I can. So, and by the way, let me give you one last little bonus thing, okay? Um, if you can add some curiosity in there, Right to make them say, well, what what is this? What does this four-step funnel look like? Or what is the traffic source he's talking about? You're going to get far more people that click. So um, I, I actually try to do all five of those things. Here's what I've got. Here's what it will do for you. Here's what you should do next. Um, here's why you should do it right now. And I try to incorporate some curiosity to make them think, what is this? What is the thing I'm going to discover on the next page? Right. And then the last step is pretty simple. It's just. Uh, it's a blank screen that just says something like click here and it's some animated arrows and we create this for our clients so that they don't have to create it themselves and show you how to put it all together. So at the end of the day, here is the entire funnel from start to finish, right? So when this is all said and done, we've got our YouTube ad here, which is about 60 to 90 seconds and it's going to push away the wrong people, attract the right people. And here in a minute, I'm going to talk to you about how to target sends them to a capture page, they opt in, they watch a video. The people who are not a good fit, they're going to filter themselves out at one of these steps. They're either going to skip the ad, they're either not going to opt in, they're not going to watch the video, which is all what we want because we don't want to be hopping on the phone with time vampires, right? So then they can schedule a call and fill out an application. And then you look at that to make sure it's the right fit. And then you're only getting on the phone with people who are already primed and ready to buy. And you can have a really high closing rate. Now, the last... A uh, couple of things I get asked all the time. First of all, well, how much time does it take to build this? Well, if you build it on your own, it'll probably take you a long time. Um, we actually, honestly, for our clients, we build this and then we just give you an unlock code where all of the tech is already built. So if you don't want to mess with it and you just want pages that are unlocked and sort of downloaded into your uh, sort of your funnel account, we, uh, our, our, one, of, one of my partners can talk to you a little bit further about that. But ultimately what you're looking at doing is customizing it um, and taking our frameworks to plug, fill in the blanks of what we've already figured out works. And then you are simply putting what you know about your industry into our frameworks. And so if you have about an hour a day over the next couple of weeks, two, three, four weeks to just get this built out, 
then it's totally reasonable that we can have that funnel built within a week and a half to two weeks. And then our goal is that we would start sending traffic from YouTube within your third week. And then by your third or fourth week, you've got your first client from this system, okay? And so um, once it's built, it's built. That's what. Well, that's why I say when you have it, do you have an hour a day to invest in building this if you've got somebody at your side helping you? Because we're not talking about an hour a day in perpetuity. We're talking about an hour a day to get this damn thing built. And once it's done, I haven't touched my funnel in eight months. That's it. It just keeps on bringing new people onto our calendar over and over and over and over again um, on, at, a, at a consistent pace. And then it's just, you decide how, how many clients do I want this month? And just like turning on the water faucet with more water pressure, you either turn up the traffic or turn down the traffic based on how many clients you want. Now, the last question I'm gonna answer that a lot of people really want help with is, well, how do I actually, once I've got my ad written, how do I make sure it only goes in front of the people who are my ideal clients? And this is where I asked earlier, who owns YouTube? Well, it's Google. Well, Google also owns you know, Google search, so they know what keywords people are typing. YouTube, they know what videos they're watching. Chrome browser, they know what websites you're visiting. Gmail, so they know what email content is being consumed. Android, so they know where they live, what apps they use, what they search on their phone. And so this is all first party data, okay? And so what we do is we take this data and all we do is we ask you, let me let me just bring my face up again because so that I can kind of discuss this with you guys in a little bit more personal way. And then I'll, I'll share my screen again for some examples. But what we like to do is we like to say, okay, what are your, this is why I asked you earlier to think, what would my ideal client be searching for? You only need to come up with one or two ideas to start with. And what I do is I show you how to come up, not, not even out of your own brain. I show you how to get Google to show you all of the other ideas that you would have never thought of that your perfect ideal clients are searching for and what websites they're visiting, what go what other competitors and gurus um, they're, they're watching on YouTube and visiting websites and what tools and software and apps they're using. All I do is jot out all of those things based on one simple starting point with my audience saying, how do I X, Y, or Z, right? Once we know that, here's what's so powerful. We can tell Google... Okay, um, here's why Google has changed recently on YouTube. It used to be that you could run your ad in front of a person at the moment they were watching a video about a specific keyword. So let's say that you were selling, um, you know, um, you're, you're a marriage coach, um, or let's say that you, um, instead of a marriage coach, let's say that you're a, a weight loss coach and somebody is watching a video about, um, you know, what's the best diet for weight loss? Well, used to be that you would target that specific video and say, only show my ad when people are watching this video about how to lose weight. And that was great when it worked. It doesn't work very well anymore. And so this is why a lot of people who used to succeed on, on YouTube are now struggling. What we have to do now is we have to take, um, I don't want to go too much into the weeds on this, but essentially what we want to do is we want to take a bucket of ideas of keywords and instead of saying, hey, Google, target people at the exact moment they're watching this video, hey, Google, find people who've recently, like in the past couple of days, have exhibited behavior um, around these specific keywords, and now it doesn't matter what video they're watching. They could be watching a video about how to fix their water heater, but if Google knows they've also recently searched for, you know, how do I fix my marriage, or how do I help my child with ADHD or whatever, your ad can pop up in front of them, and because now we're targeting the right person and not just a specific video. And what I, I, at first I was worried when Google made this change, but now I love it because I have so much more flexibility and so much more scalability because I can reach so many more people with this method of targeting, right? And we help you with all of the setting this up, but I want you to kind of really understand that. And so like we've got a client named John who said, um, let me start with Mark. We got a client named Mark. And he was like, yeah, but Tyson, here's, here's a big question I get from people. But Tyson, I, I don't help individuals. What you sell, it seems like you only help people selling B2C. No, that's not true. But business to consumer, that's not true at all. Um, and, I'll, and I'll give you an example, okay? Do, do we help people selling business to consumer? Sure. But um, I, we had a guy come to us and say, Tyson, I sell more like business to organization. B, I, I, we have some people, I'm, I sell B2B, I sell business to organization. We had a client named Mark who said, I sell to nonprofit organizations 
who are struggling with their fundraising for their, uh, for their nonprofits. And so I said, well, listen, Mark, here's the thing. We're not targeting the organization. Organizations are made up of people. So if you sell B2B or B2 organization, understand this. We're targeting people within the organization who have specific problems. So are there people within a nonprofit who might be typing in, how do I raise funds for a nonprofit? How do I find wealthy donors for a nonprofit? Yes. So we're ta Google gives us the ability to find those people way more easily than we can on Facebook through this sort of keyword buckets that we help you to set up. Or we had a client named John who targets trucking company owners and he helps them to back up their, their software. And I said, well, what's the name of the software? And he said, it's called McLeod. And I said, okay, so would your audience be typing in anything like how to use McLeod software, how to back up McLeod software, how, whatever, right? And so now we can target anybody who uses McLeod software, regardless of what video they're watching, and we can get in front of that person at the exact, um, uh, we can get in front of that person based on who they are and the problems that they've got, which is really, really the way that we can scale what we're doing. So hopefully that kind of clears things up a little bit about uh, about the way that we find our, our audience. And so the way I like to think of the Google data is this. Um, I'm sure all of you know what a Venn diagram is. So if we put two circles together, we can target on Google based on demographics. We can say, hey, um, I want to target people based on where they live. I want to target everybody in the United States or everybody in Canada or everybody in the United States, Canada, and Germany all in one campaign. We can do entire countries, multiple countries. We could go down to the local granular level. I only want to target people in this zip code and 30 miles uh, radius around it. I want to target people in this age range. I want to target people who are only males, male, uh, only, only females. I want to target people who have a household income of X, Y, or Z. That's typically uh, only available in the United States. But then here's where Google targeting gets so powerful. We layer on top of it psychographic data, right? Demographic data is who they are. Psychographic data is what's going on in their mind. What are they searching for? What videos are they watching? What problems are they looking for solutions to? What software and apps are they using? What gurus are they following? And what happens is we only show your ad to the people that fall in this middle section, which makes what we do incredibly, incredibly targeted, right? And so if you guys, again, are interested in having our help with doing this, you're more than welcome to visit the link that you see on the screen. Again, we do not have the ability to talk to everyone. So this is why we have you fill out a short questionnaire first. That way we can take a look at your business, understand what you do, make sure that we can help you. And if we believe that we can, we'll get on a strategy call with you. Um, and we will, um, uh, we will, um, uh, sort of uh, one of my partners will dive into how to customize these strategies for your uh, specific business. And uh, if it looks like what we do is a fit and you want more help, we'll ask a really simple question. Would you like our help? And if you say yes, then we could talk more about what our coaching would look like and how you would work with us to get this done in a much faster way. And if not, then we hope you the best. We wish that you run run with this and, and, and kill it on your own, right? So let me, uh, just in case anybody's having trouble seeing the link on your screen, I'm gonna put it in the chat. But again, let me just remind everybody here that um, please do not, do not book a call with my team if you don't meet the basic two criteria that I've mentioned twice already. But if you're joining us late, I'll mention it one more time. You have to be able to solve a major life or business problem with your work, whether, whether it's a product you sell, a program, um, you know, the counseling that you do, the programs you sell, the services you provide, the product, whatever it is, you need to be able to solve a major life or business problem. And number two, you need to be willing to invest in the growth of your business because we are primarily in this program focused on running ads on YouTube, um, which is a paid strategy. And so you're going to need to be willing to invest. Again, we're going to hold your hand and walk you through how to do this in a very um, strategized, systematized way so that we're not risking a lot of money. And we're going to do it at an enormous profit, but we need to have some capital available um, in order to do this. Um, and, and to do it um, the right way and to do it quickly and to get over that testing phase really quickly. So um, I hope that you guys have found this to be really helpful and valuable. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and answer some questions that have maybe come in through the chat. So here's what I, I, I don't know if I'm necessarily going to be able to have um, 
to be able to scroll through every single question that's come in. I'll, I'll look through a few of them, but if you want to, um, if you want to type in um, some questions into the chat that you've got about anything that we shared, happy to stick around and answer those for you. I'll leave the link on the screen and you're welcome to check that out um, and, and book a call with my team if you're interested in speaking with one of my partners. But um, let's see, uh, somebody said, this is fantastic. First world problems, parking my yacht key. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Yeah. Um, somebody said, um, for financial services, um, how do you deal with compliance issues? That's a great, great question. So the answer to this question is that you don't have to talk about your program or the exact outcomes that you will acquire for someone in order to attract the kind of person who you can give great results to, okay? So yes, we know how to navigate things like compli uh, the two big areas, that com the two big niches where compliance can get you in trouble if you don't know what you're doing are financial services. If you make financial claims, that can be a problem. And also, um, if you are in weight loss, right? If you say, uh, here, you know, opt in here, and we'll show you how to lose 30 pounds in two weeks or whatever. Um, honestly, even if your claim is true and, um, and reasonable, you still have to be careful. Like even if you said how to lose 30 pounds in the next 12 months, even that can get you in trouble. So here, the solution to this without going too much in the weeds is what you do is you, you save anything that might be questionable for the algorithm for parts of your funnel that are outside of the eyes of the algorithm, right? What, is the, what does YouTube actually see? They only see two things. They see your ad on YouTube and they see your landing page. That's it. They're not actually opting in and watching your 10-minute video, right? They're not actually getting on the phone with you and hearing what you say on the phone, so we just make sure that the ad, the 60 second ad is compliant and the landing page, the headline and what we say on the landing page is compliant. And then once they're outside of the prying eyes of Facebook uh, or I'm sorry, of YouTube and they're watching our 10 minute video, then we can say, now we don't want to say things that are going to be non-compliant with three letter government agencies, right? We don't wanna say things that are gonna get us in trouble with the FTC. That's up to you to know your industry on those kinds of things, right? You bring the expertise to the table, we will help you to put ads and systems together to attract your ideal clients. Our, our, our perfect client is really the person who comes to us and says, Tyson, I'm really good at what I do, but I, I, I stink at finding clients. I don't know how to find my next clients. I'm using methods that are slow or they're unpredictable and they're unreliable. And I want something that I know if I want to sign up 10 clients next month, I know I can do it predictably, right? You bring the skills and expertise to the table and we'll help you put the systems in place to make that happen. But, uh, and that's where like knowing uh, things like, okay, is my particular, do I have government restrictions around certain things I can say? and certain promises, well, if that's the case, I want you to ask yourself, how would you sell to someone in a one-on-one -on -one conversation? Because the system we're helping you to build is gonna help you to sell to people in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but what we're gonna, we're not gonna do it in a way where it's pushy and hypey and weird and cold cally and you're talking to a bunch of strangers that you have to like, it, I don't even think of it as a sales call. I call it consultative closing because it's, all right, you're here because you've raised your hand and been through a bunch of filters saying you're interested in what I'm talking about, right? So that means that they want what I've got. So I don't have to sell them on why my thing is great. They've already gone through the filter saying, yes, this guy, I, I think what he's got is, is a good fit. All I've got to do is kind of answer their questions, show them how to customize it to their situation. And then I can say, do you want our help with this? They go, no, I'm going to do it on my own. Or yeah, I think I'd love your help. Awesome. Let's let's talk about what the investment looks like. And then we have a conversation and get the right people enrolled. And, and we're doing this all in a very helpful way where neither you or the prospect leave feeling icky or gross or weird. It, it was a very natural, normal conversation. That's what we want to help you to do. But you have to have the right system in place. There's a great quote. Here's a good, here's a good writer downer. There's a great quote from Peter Drucker. Okay. Peter Drucker once said, the goal of marketing is to make selling superfluous. I'll say it again. The goal of marketing is to make selling superfluous. So if we put the right system in place, that four-step system that gets people on the phone, 
It should make it to where the phone call does not have to be a pushy, hypey sales call. That's what he means. And that's the system that we have mastered in our business that we're doing multiple six figures a month with and that we can help you to scale your business with as well, okay? Um, let's see, other questions here. Um, somebody said, uh, don't you think that the ad would be clicked skip by a client as he is focused to video. Not sure if I understand the question, but here's what I have found. People who are not interested, click skip. People who say, right now is not a good time for me, click skip. But oftentimes those people get shown the ad again later on. Um, if, if Google knows they're in the right market, it'll keep showing it to them because it knows from the other people who've actually taken, um, that have met the lagging indicators that we talked about earlier those people will actually, Google will know, oh, this is still the right person, so we're gonna keep showing it um, to that person. There are also things you can do with follow-up, and so, yeah, will sometimes your perfect prospect still click skip on an ad? Yeah, but you don't need, you don't need every one of your perfect prospects to click uh, uh, the button to go forward. You only need enough people each month to meet your revenue goals at the profit point that you wanna meet, that's it. Right, and so I'm not worried about everybody. I'm only worried about meeting the right people. If I if I misunderstood your question, please feel free to ask it again. Um, somebody said, "Is it true that running ads on YouTube will negatively affect the growth of performance of a YouTube channel?" I've never seen that or heard that, but honestly, what I typically recommend people do anyway is set up a separate YouTube channel just for running ads, so that you can keep your metrics separate. Um, and then, even if that were an issue, um, it would be they'd be totally separated. I have never, ever heard of that being the case ever. Um, so I, I, my, my answer would be, I doubt it, okay? Um, let's see. Um, let's see, this has been very valuable. I'm still working on my offer. Um, and yeah, so for those people who say, yeah, I'm still working on my offer. Again, this is one of the things we help our clients. with. Here's, here's what I find. Let me give you a really great piece of advice. I see a lot of people thinking that their offer needs to be way more complicated and time consuming to create than what it really does, okay? With most of our clients, even if you come to us with nothing in place, right? You're like, Tyson, I, and here, let me, let me explain it this way, okay? This is especially true if you are a coach or a consultant or you provide some sort of service for people, okay? A lot of people think, well, I, I'm going to provide some sort of like digital program and I need to record a bunch of videos and I need to have a membership site and I got to put it in a password protected site and they spend all their time getting ready to get ready to get ready to get ready. And you know what they're doing? I'm going to tell you the solution to this in a minute. But what they're doing is they are wasting time on something that they don't even know yet if their audience is going to want to buy, Right. Um, this is a terrible, terrible thing. Here's what I do. Every single time I've ever created a program, I sell it first before it's created. And you might think, how in the world is that possible? Let me ask you this. Let's say that you have the ability to help someone save money on their taxes. Okay, we got a client named Chris. That's his That's his, his superpower. He is. He knows the tax code inside and out. Okay, and... He, he has this ability to help people lower their tax liability to, you know, almost nothing. If somebody came to him tomorrow and said, Chris, listen, dude, um, you, I've heard you are really good at the tax code. Um, I need your help right now because uh, uh, I, I need to get this done before tax season. Um, I will pay you $10,000 right now if you can help me save 50 grand on my taxes. Would Chris walk away with all the knowledge in his head? Would he walk away and say, yeah, I'll tell you what, take your 10 grand and come back to me in about uh, eight weeks when I've got a bunch of videos ready in a, in a membership site. No, he's not going to do that. Nor would you probably do that. If your area of expertise is, you know, uh, helping people with their kids, right? And, and you've got unruly children and their children don't behave. Are you going to say, wait till I get a bunch of videos in a membership site and then come back and then I'll take your $5,000 to work with you? No. What you would do is probably say, hey, let's start working together now. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, this wasn't meant to be part of the presentation, but I'm going to give you this as a bonus right now. For most of you, 
You can, you can literally start selling your expertise tomorrow with just three things, okay? Number one, a Zoom account where you could hop on a weekly call with your client to give them the advice that they need. Number two, a like a Facebook group or a WhatsApp group where your clients can uh, participate in a group community and send you private messages in between those one-on-one -on -one calls every week. And the third thing is a Google Drive account. All three of those things, by the way, you can be found for free. A Google Drive account so that you can upload reusable resources. When you work with John on thing A and you realize, you know, Peter is also going to need thing A, you don't keep telling John and Peter and Bob and Susie all the same thing over and over, right? What you do instead is you say, man, I just gave Peter some really good advice. I'm going to record that put it in a Google Drive, and now anybody else that needs that information, I'm going to give him a reusable resource. And so what we help our clients to do is to build a program that even if you have nothing recorded or created ahead of time, you sell the syllabus, you sell the outline, you sell the journey. Here's the roadmap of what we're going... Now, my program is created. It's been created for, for many, many, many months. But um, in the beginning, before you have your program up and running, you can start literally making ten to $20,000 per month with just those three things, a Zoom account, um, a like a community area like Facebook or WhatsApp where people can ask you questions in between your weekly calls and a, uh, a cloud-based uh, software like Google Drive or Dropbox where you can upload resources and give people a link to any of those, uh, any of those resources that you want them to download, okay? Again, if you're interested in having us help you. So it's a big, big mistake to say, well, I'm, I'm going to spend the next eight weeks working on my offer before I start marketing it. I actually market my offers before they're fully created. I have the roadmap in mind. I have the expertise to help people. I have the journey, the syllabus of what I'm going to work with them on in mind. But I haven't created a single video. I haven't done any of that. I, I create all of my programs. The first time I create them, I create it on the go with real people. Not only does, does this, I get paid to create my programs, I know it's going to work because I'm, 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 I'm proving the concept before I spend a bunch of time creating it. And the final product is way, way better because it was created with real people. Real people said, hey, I've got this problem. And I went, wow, I didn't even think about it. Had I recorded this just coming up with ideas, I probably wouldn't have thought of that thing. But like even just on this Zoom call right now, you guys are asking me questions where I'm like, Oh yeah, I hadn't thought about that. That's a great question. Had I just recorded something for you today and said, okay, go watch this recording, it would have been far less valuable than me engaging with a real group of people. And so this, this training, I hope you felt it's been valuable, ends up being far more useful and valuable to people down the road who might watch um, you know, a, a recorded version if I decide to offer that, okay? Let's see. Um, can we, can we use the system to sell a subscription or a membership program? Yes, you can. That's a good question, Sarah. Uh, the, the, it, what it comes down to really is um, we, we have to make sure that the money math works. And so I will tell you this, it, depending on the type of subscription, you may want to keep doing a subscription or a membership or selling your program by the month or by the hour. I typically don't recommend that because it becomes real easy to commoditize it. But there are certain businesses where you have to do it that way. Like our client, John, I was telling you about, he helped people with their software services. Well, he has to do monthly services month after month um, to kind of help people with their ba their data backup. And the longer that uh, he, they work with him, they just have to keep paying them. And, th and that's a thing where it has to be a membership or a kind of an ongoing basis. But there are a lot of people that come to us and say, oh, okay, I'm charging... $150 for a one hour session. Here's why that's a bad idea. You want to make your thing as hard to compare to your competitors as possible. If they say, well, you're 150 an hour and my competitor is 100 an hour, I'll just go with the cheaper person, right? This is when you your thing now becomes a commodity. Instead, what you want to do is you want to, and this is something we help you with. You want to structure your offer in a way where it has things in it where it's like your audience could not possibly compare it to a competitor because now it's focused on the outcome that they achieve. It's focused on intangibles, like how quickly they're going to get the result they want, how much easier it's going to be for them to get the result with you versus their competitors, how customized it is for their situation. Those are things that A, will differentiate you and B, make your audience 
far more likely to, uh, to convert and pay higher prices, okay? I have found that people will pay more for speed, simplicity, and customization. Those three things are big factors. And this is why this model works so well to get you to your income goals really, really quickly, okay? Susie said, oh, okay, I got Susie's already. Um, let's see, next question. Uh, just a lot of, hey, this was done awesome. Was so, so much value. Thank you. I appreciate that feedback. Uh, Roger says, um, you do something with your YouTube ads that allows people to choose an answer to a question and then they fast forward to your answer. Why is that? Is that part? No. Ro what Roger's talking about is a, is a video that I've got after people opt in from my YouTube ad. I have a special type of video that where people can choose their own adventure. And what this comes down to, Roger, is honestly what I just said. People are more likely to convert if they feel that what you're offering them is customized for their situation and for their specific um, sort of their business or their whatever it is that you're selling for their situation, right? And so now, do I recommend you create a, what I have is like a choose your own adventure video where it says, hey, if you're in this type of business, click here. If you're in this type of business, click here. If you're, and then the video dynamically changes and it goes to the next portion. It fast forwards to a section that says, awesome. So you're in relationships. Here's why that's great. And here's an example of this, this, and this. And now they feel like, okay, this will really work for my situation. Now, here's, I'll give you a big word of warning. Okay. That video, I didn't create it straight out of the gate. It wasn't the first thing I created when I started creating my funnel. I created a simple video that proved my, my marketing methods and got my audience reacting or uh, taking action so I could, I could analyze their behavior. And I could say, okay, these people are taking action um, and this is what they're responding to. And then once I had that data, I modified my funnel accordingly. And then once I had that version of the funnel up that I felt good about, then I haven't touched it in months. So I'll tell you that video, I didn't create it right away. And B, it took me for that particular video, it took me a good six weeks between um, mapping it out. Cause it was like, if they click here, they go to this video. If they click here, they click here. It's like, it was this big complicated thing, mapping it out, recording all the parts, editing it, putting it all together, scripting it, writing the copy. It was, it was a project. Well, the last thing I want to do is spend six weeks on a thing that I haven't even, I, I haven't even proven the concept of my, my angle, my mark, my messaging angle. Does my audience even want this problem solved? And I just created a 45 minute video for six weeks, choose your own adventure. So why do I create it? Well, I created it so it would create that, that yes, this is customized for what I need, but I didn't do it right away. I waited until after my I had known exactly what messaging angles my audience was responding to. And then, so when you work with us, yeah, I can help you. I can show you what software I use. And if you're at a place where you're ready to do that, I can help you with that. But most people, haven't even proven their concept yet. And so with with that, we're going to help you in a very, very quick way to just with a, like in, in two weeks, week and a half, two weeks to get a 10 minute video and a 60 second YouTube ad where we can just test as your audience responding to this. And now we've only spent a week and a half or two weeks instead of months to get this done. Okay. Um, somebody said, I'm not a coach. I'm a digital online business owner, mentoring people to go online uh, my training has everything in it, but I'm looking for the right audience. Yeah, that's a great question, Miriam. So let me let me just say this. Um, if you have, I'll tell you, I used to be in your shoes. I Everything I used to sell was just digital. It was just a, all right, here's my thing. Uh, go buy it and good luck. It, it was a do-it-yourself program. And what I found was the amount of money I could charge was capped because people were not getting the personalized help that they needed. And the... People's ability to get results in a program like that was less because they didn't have the personalized help that they needed. I wanted more impact and I wanted uh, better clients, more, um, more income with fewer people to work with. And so I found that literally, I'm, I'm talking, anybody here who's already got like a digital program, if you just add a couple of elements to your existing program and you package it the right way, I was charging $500 for a program. Now, I'm not really selling the same program. I, I, it's not the same program at all. That was a that was a program on Facebook Messenger. Um, this is a totally different program that really goes everything someone needs from start to finish 
to get to five figures or more per month and scale their business to 10, 20, 30, 50,000, 100,000 dollars a month or more per month in their business. And it's like everything they need from start to finish. So what I have found is that if you just add a couple of extra things, a couple of extra elements and you position it the right way, you can probably triple, maybe even 5X or 6X what you're currently charging and attract way better people. Um, and that's what we did. We, we, we ended up revamping our program, adding a few extra things to it, adding some coaching elements. We got rid of the old $500 product um, that, that uh, we sold that was only on Facebook ads. Uh, it was only on Facebook um, Messenger ads. And what we did instead was we put together a comprehensive program that focused on YouTube, everything someone needs from start to finish. That way they don't walk away going, oh, well, I got a piece of what I need from Tyson, but now I need to go over here and get the other thing. In our program, our goal is that you have everything you need to get to 10, 20 grand a month within the time that you're working with us, like four to eight weeks, and then have everything you need once you've graduated from our program to scale to 50 grand a month, 100, really whatever you want a month. And you'll see inside of our program how I do it as a one-man band. Um, I'm, I'm the guy doing all the fulfillment in my program. So if you work with us in this program, you'll be working directly with me. My partners will kind of talk you through um, how this will work for your business. But then if you come in in a coaching capacity, you and I will be working together and he, they can explain that a bit more to you. So feel free to apply for a call with one of my partners if you're interested in that. Um, let me see if there's any other questions here that I've missed. Um, what funnel software do you use? Uh, well, here's the, here's the answer to that question. Let me, let me say this, okay? The funnel software I use doesn't really matter. Um, this is a little bit like asking a, a, a world-class carpenter, which drill did you use to build that mansion? Was it a DeWalt drill or was it a Black & Decker? And the truth is the drill had almost nothing to do with it, right? It's the fundamentals. If that guy doesn't have the fundamentals of how to put two boards together and, you know, all the things that, that go into being a master uh, carpenter and construction worker, doesn't matter what drill he uses. Same thing is true here. You can use whatever tool you want. I'll tell you in our program, what we, we build our funnel in our program inside of a system called Kartra. And the reason we do that is because Kartra is the only funnel building system I've found where I can build everything for you from start to finish. Like, and you just unlock it and everything works out of the box. I've looked at other systems like ClickFunnels and I've used ClickFunnels, but everything I did in ClickFunnels, it was like I could give you the pages, but then you still had to connect all the tech together and you had to connect it to some other third-party applications. Like in Kartra, I was able to put everything you needed other than there was really one extra thing people needed, but it's not a big, it's the calendar software uh, we use Calendly. So really to use our system, what well, uh, we build it in Kartra to unlock it. And then we say, go get Calendly for your calendar booking software. And then every, between those two things, that's pretty much all you need in order to actually build out the funnel. But do you have to use Kartra? No, if you're like, I use Kajabi and I'm already invested in Kajabi, fine. Take the pages that we've built and rebuild them. What's going to make you successful is not the funnel software. It's what it's the offer. It's what you say on those pages. It's the copy. Um, it's the marketing angles, the targeting. That's what that's that's the like that's the fundamental stuff, right? So, and that's that's where most people are failing. And if if you're struggling, it's probably due to a lot of that stuff. And that's where you probably can uh, can benefit from our help on this kind of stuff. Okay. All right. Let's see. Yeah, somebody said, I'm looking uh, for my winning YouTube, uh, ad on YouTube. I've got a funnel ready, everything I, I need. All I need is the right audience um, and how to make a winning ad. And that, yeah, perfect. That's exactly what we work with our clients on, Miriam. So it sounds like you're a good fit for what we do. So feel free to book a call, okay? Um, JB says, I'm a hard, hardcore YouTube viewer, but I never click or pay attention to any ads. How can we get attention of those types of people? You don't. Again, you do you need the attention of every single person on YouTube. No. Right? So a lot of people make the mistake of saying, well, I don't click on ads on YouTube. So why does it? Nobody does. Right? Well, not everybody is like you. Right? Um, I have people. Uh, yeah. Are there some people who are going to have ad blockers? Yeah. You're just not going to reach those people. But, um, and that's okay. Now, are there other ways that you could reach those people? Probably, but I don't, I don't worry about it. I'm not trying to reach everybody. I'm trying to reach enough people to reach my income goal every month. That's it. For my income goal, I want to, I want to get about, you know, 30 to 40 people a month into my programs. That's my goal. And I work, do I need every platform and every person on the planet to get 30 to 40 people a month? No, I don't need that. 
right? So uh, all I focus is on is what do I need to get where I want to go, all right? Um, let's see. All right, cool, cool, cool. I'm just seeing if there are any other questions that are worth answering here. Do YouTube ads still work for one-on-one -on -one to sell it out as you pivot to a group? Yes, 100%, absolutely. We have a lot of clients that are doing that. Um, they're not yet in a group. Um, so this came from Kelly. Uh, they're not already, they don't have a group program in place, 100%. Um, in fact, what I show Alexandra, that was what she sold. She sold a one-on-one -on -one with that person until she had her group thing um, in place. A lot of our clients do that, 100%, okay? Um, I'm an affiliate with a marketing program and they have a monthly subscription. So funnels and everything following opt-in is covered by the company I just need. Yeah, I will tell you, any if you don't own and control your own product, I can tell you, I'm not saying it's impossible for us to work with you, but there are it's there are some unique challenges, okay? And the main thing has to do with the money math, right? If you don't own and control your own product, you're just earning a, a commission of what someone else pays you, which means you're usually not earning the full amount. So the money math is not always working in your favor. And so, yes, we have worked with people like network marketers. I don't know that I've ever really worked with just a straight up affiliate marketer, but we have worked with a few people like network marketers. Uh, but in most cases, I'll just tell you straight up, um, I usually won't work with a network marketer if they're brand new and they're just trying, well, how do I build my downline? Um, this is not really for that. Um, I, w I can help you if you want to position. Your I, I was in network marketing for many years and I can tell you here's the secret to succeeding in network marketing for anybody who wants to know about that industry. Here's the secret. The, the, the big earners in that industry don't focus on selling the product or even the, 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 the comp plan or the program that they're in. They sell themselves. They sell themselves as I'm the per I'm the leader you want to work with to get success. I'm the weight loss coach you want to work with in conjunction with these network marketing products to get you to success. That that's what every single top earner I've ever seen in that industry, that's what they do. And if you're willing to do something like that, where we help you to build a brand around yourself instead of you just going out saying, oh, check out my weight loss, uh, check out my essential oils, go buy them here or check out my CBD oil or whatever, that's, we're probably not gonna be able to work with you, okay? And if you fill out an application, we'll probably cancel your call, not because we don't like you or we think you're not in a good business model. It's just not really a fit for what we do here unless you're willing to kind of build a brand around yourself where you take some ownership and control over what you sell yourself. Um, and that's really the best way to do that. And, and if that's not something you're willing to do, I don't want to waste your time or my team's time. And I just want to be upfront and, and transparent and honest with you on that. So I hope that that's, uh, I hope that that's helpful. Okay. All right, guys. Um, let me just see if there are any final questions. Um, Kelly says some of my clients use Kartra and they love it. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, curious if you would use this process to sell a novel or build a fiction author following? Um, yeah, just to sell a book, probably not. Okay. Now, if you're an author who has, you're an author because you have expertise, like, you know, you're, you're writing books about how to solve a problem. What we want to do is take that book and package up a program that you can sell for multi thousands of dollars that we can do. But if it's a fiction, if you're a fiction author and you just want to sell more of your books, this is probably not the right system for you. But I hope you got some insights and value out of this call anyway, even if maybe booking a call with my team isn't the right fit for you, okay? All right. Uh, at this point, I really don't see any additional questions. So um, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I see this was totally helpful. This was a great call. Thanks. I appreciate the honest answer. Awesome. Yeah. So again, if you guys are interested, uh, we do have a small team. So I, I really don't know how full my, my calendar, my team's calendar are at this point. So um, if you want to book a call, um, uh, you should probably do it now while there are still spots available. And the link, again, in the chat is here. Feel free to click it. I'll put it in one more time. All right, if you go to that link, you should be able to apply. Um, somebody says, what's your opinion on Influencer Soft? 
Have you checked them out? I've never heard of it. Influencer Soft, never heard of them. I have Infusion Soft. Um, I know that, but I've never heard of Influencer Soft. So that's a new one to me. Okay. I see. Thank you for your time. Awesome, guys. Well, I appreciate you guys being here. Um, if you want to grab a spot on my team's calendar while there are spots available, make sure you do that now because it does fill up really quickly. Um, and we'll see you guys um, on a future training. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.